How do I delete a folder I can't delete? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. A couple of videos ago, I talked about deleting a folder that I couldn't delete and how it may not necessarily be worth the time and the effort. Fine, I get it. You still want to delete the folder. Here are some of the reasons it can happen and some of the things that I try when I find myself in this situation. So there are a couple of reasons that this can happen. The most common one, honestly, is that the file is being used by some other program. That means either identifying which program that is and shutting it down or usually rebooting the machine uh, and then having deleting that folder be the first thing you do uh, before you start up any of your other software. If that still doesn't solve the problem, firing up a tool like Process Explorer, which can allow you to determine who's using a file in use. And I've got an article on that. How can I find out who's using a file in use? We'll walk you through the process of using Process Explorer to see which process has this file open or this folder open. But like I said, that's by far, by far the most common reason that you can't delete a file or a folder. Number two and three are kind of mixed together at the low end of the, of the probability scale, but they do happen. One is that the full path is too long. Now, this can be a little bit obscure. Windows, as it turns out, has a couple of different limitations in the length of a path name. Uh, by path, I mean the full C colon backslash folder slash folder slash folder slash file name, that whole thing has to be either less than uh, 32,000 characters in some cases, or more commonly, 260 characters. And that's where we tend to run into some problems from time to time. The issue is that some tools can work with the 32,000 limit and some can't. Some are stuck with the 260 limit. So if you have a file or a folder that is at you know, its full path, from the root of whatever drive it is, is longer than 260 characters, some tools just aren't going to be able to deal with it. And that's unfortunate, but you need to find some ways around that. We'll talk about a couple of ideas. The other, and this too happens oddly enough, often, even though it should never happen, and that is simply that the file name has an invalid character in it. For example, um, a greater than sign is used in the command line to indicate something called redirection. Basically take the output of this program and re redirect it to this file. There should never be a file name with a greater than character in it. It's illegal. And yet, sometimes some programs can create a file that has that character in the file name. What that means though then is that great, the file exists, but none of the tools you might use to delete the file will accept what you're telling it is the file name as the file name, because that should never exist. Again, it shouldn't. Windows somewhere, I guess, has a hole in it that allows it to happen. Uh, but the bottom line is it shouldn't happen, but occasionally it does. And that can cause this kind of confusion. So what we're going to do um, is use my example folder from a couple of uh, videos ago, because I still have it around. I haven't deleted it yet. And I'll look at a couple of the different approaches that I take when um, deleting a folder or trying to delete a folder that can't be deleted. So here we are back in uh, Windows Command Prompt. The folder is still here. I've you know got it named folder I can't delete, uh, which is very a very good way to leave things if you decided that you're not going to waste the energy. Uh, the first thing that I try to do is just delete what I can. So the delete command, the del, is the Windows command prompt delete command. Slash s means delete subfolders and everything in them. Slash q means don't ask me, just do it. Dot means the current folder. Now my current folder is e colon backslash t. So what I'm actually trying to do is delete the folder that I'm in. That will generate an error, but it won't generate an error until it's tried to delete everything in the folder. This is how I quickly delete the contents of a folder. If I've got a lot of stuff in a folder and I just want to delete it all, um, del slash s slash q dot is the way to do that. Again, I'll get an error at the end that says you can't delete the folder you're in, but everything else will be gone, except when it's not. And that's what's going to happen here. So we've got all these error messages again, because we can't delete a bunch of folders that are somewhere in the, uh, somewhere in the folder tree that we're trying to delete. So nothing has changed here. We're still in folder I can't delete. 
we don't know what's causing this problem. It's often the case where we won't know specifically what's causing the problem. What I will sometimes do is now go down the folder tree um, to you know one of the subfolders um, that's part way down. Here I've got a couple of folders that have um, you know some both have files within them. One of the things I will do is I will go move one of the folders to backslash, which is essentially the root of this drive. In fact, I'm going to move it to backslash T. So I'm actually moving this folder that is a subfolder within the subfolder T uh, up to the top of the folder. Now it moved the thing, right? So I've just got the one thing left here. And if I go back to T and correctly type DIR, you'll see that I now have this other folder, Wasart Supply in this case, um, up here. And I can, in fact, try again to delete that folder and everything in it. Of course, this time it worked. So maybe, maybe we have a length problem because there was nothing else that prevented that folder from being deleted this time. The only thing I changed was its location and I moved it so that it was in a shorter path. That apparently was enough to make a difference. The other thing that can happen is again with file names causing problems, uh, sometimes that'll be an issue. So now I'm going to go, go ahead and go further down the folder this time. And you can see this is a very long path, uh, which would lend some credence to there being potentially a path length issue here. But in this folder, I've got a couple of files. And I'm going to assume for a moment that one of them has a bad character in it. So if I were to just try to delete the file, that delete would fail all by itself because of this invalid character. One of the ways to deal with that, to try to deal with that, is to rename it. So I'm going to take one of these first files here and rename it to t.t. This did not work. This implies to me that there is something about that file name that is causing a problem. My guess would be the square brackets, because I don't believe square brackets can be in a uh, file name. Uh, sometimes renaming this would work. In this case, it didn't. But it is something to at least have in your toolbox to try. So if we assume that this didn't work, if this isn't going to work for us, what then? Well, then we get to some more obscure techniques that I'm not going to actually show you, but I'm at least going to mention here. Uh, and you'll see why I wrote that previous article about things maybe not being worth taking the time. Um, one of the things I, I actually go to first is to actually boot from a Linux Live CD or USB stick. The interesting things about Linux is that, honestly, it does a better job of handling random characters and file names. Uh, it's easier to escape, it's easier to specify, and in many cases, the set of illegal characters aren't quite the same. So sometimes the characters that are causing you a problem in Windows won't in Linux. So if you are able to boot up into Linux and examine the hard disk, examine whatever it is you can't delete uh, using the Linux version of its file explorer, you may very well find that you can delete the file right there. Back in Windows, we moved a folder to create a shorter path to that folder. Another approach is to use the subst command, which allows you to specify a drive letter that represents something further down a folder tree that could then allow you to delete based on that drive letter instead of the full original path. PowerShell is absolutely something to try. It's a different tool. It has a different set of base assumptions and it may behave differently for some of these situations. Another option is to use the Windows subsystem for Linux. It's available in the Microsoft Store. And what it will allow you to do is fire up a Linux shell within Windows and then use Linux commands like RM to delete the file. The interesting thing about Linux, and this is the same that would be true if you had booted from a Linux Live CD, is the difference in the way they specify escaped characters or quote non-standard non characters and the number of characters they will actually allow you to have in a file name. That too can be another way to basically 
bypass some of the limitations that whatever Windows tool you're using is bumping up against and see if that won't work. Sys Internals has a couple of tools called Pen Moves and Move File. Those are intended to delete files or move files that happen to be in use. They basically schedule that movement to happen on your next reboot. The same technique can sometimes be used to resolve undeletable folder issues. And finally, yeah, there are third party tools, third party tools that will try and do exactly some of the things we've done here, just in a nicer interface. Um, my recommendation is that you focus on the things you already have available to you in Windows. And ultimately, my real recommendation, of course, is that you not waste time on this unless it's very, very important. But now you can see here are a number of different techniques, a number of different ways to go about deleting files and folders that normally you might not be able to delete. Hope that was helpful. For comments, for updates, for related links and more, visit askleo.com 148863. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.